Hi everyone, welcome back to Coffee, Books, and Rain. I am Rachel, and yes, have the dregs of my coffee remaining. It is decaf, because we are kind of running on the end of Sunday evening. Work tomorrow, sadly. Don't want to go, but needs must with regards to paying bills and all those sorts of things. Um, I just got done with D&D &D about an hour ago, uh, so I still have a little bit of cleaning up to do. I still have a little bit of um, getting myself pulled together and all that sort of fun stuff, but I wanted to do a couple of book reviews, get them published and posted for you guys for the coming week because we are almost at the end of September and I cannot believe it. Uh, I think I saw a post on Instagram was like, yeah, August was fast, but, uh, September has like, like it's running shoes on or something like that. It is absolutely ridiculous. Like, I don't even know what's going on because I don't, I blinked and September is already on like September, like we're days away from the end of September. I swear it was just September 13th. Like I was just Friday the 13th. I was having a little fun weekend. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> this is not about Friday the 13th or anything like that. Even though I do love a good Friday the 13th, I love a good dress up Halloween sort of vibe. Um, and again, I love a good D and D session, which I just finished have hopefully one more session before this quest ends we shall see um they have one more room and then one big baddie to kind of face off against before they go back to the city to kind of round out this quest we shall see if we can finish that up in about a five hour session i don't know because it took them two hours to work through a room with a moving floor <laughs> it took them two hours to work through a room that had a shifting floor <laughs> so I don't know I don't I don't know what's in store for two weeks from today today we are talking about a book that I have been waiting for for quite a hot minute and when I say a hot minute if you are not familiar with the terminology um, a hot minute means just I have been waiting for it for a long time and I have been waiting for it for a little while impatiently waiting for it um, so a hot minute just means like impatiently waiting for it um, that tends to be what a hot minute tends to mean at least in my terminology and so TJ Klune released on September 10th his sequel to Beyond the Cerulean Sea. And this one is called Somewhere Beyond the Sea. Now, Net Galley provided me earlier in the year with, uh, I would say, somewhere like 80 or so pages of kind of a little bit of a sneak peek or an excerpt of the book, which was absolutely beautifully done. And I was so incredibly thankful to receive that excerpt. Um, I almost was kind of glad that I didn't get the whole thing. Now, of course, selfish me wanted to receive the whole thing, but completely understand that TJ Klune's, like, books, especially the ones like this, In the Lives of Puppets, Somewhere Beyond the Sea, Cerulean Sea, those books are so incredibly popular right now. They are so well done. They are so heartwarming that just receiving an excerpt is incredibly special. And so I, I, I thank them from the bottom of my heart for be like for allowing me to like get that sneak peek and to get that glimpse. And I can see from the Goodreads stats just right now as I'm like talking to you guys here like at the end of September because I did want to wait just a little bit for this book to have a couple weeks on the shelves. I went out and bought the physical copy 
I went out and bought the audiobook. I paid for this book out of my own pocket two different ways. I used an audible credit and I which again I paid for my audible credits and so I used one for beyond the sea be somewhere beyond the sea and then I went and physically went to Barnes and Noble and I bought my physical copy was it which is actually on the shelf over there otherwise I'd bring it over here and I'd show it to you guys um but I truly think this book is very deserving of um, being recognized for its diversity, its inclusiveness, and for the wording it uses with regards to its, its inclusiveness for people, like just its people as a whole. And I think that is just so incredibly important. There is even an excerpt in the beginning with regards to the transgender community that I believe TJ Klune includes that um, he wants the transgender community to like understand that he sees them and he hears them and he um, he he like he knows they're there like it's 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 beautifully written and I I'm not doing it justice but. Um, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> okay. So, again, I told you I had bought it. So, I will justify. But I just, I want to be able to tell you. He says, I see you. I hear you. I love you. This story is for you. And that's what he says for the trans community the world over. And I just love that so much. So, um, I know in, on this channel, like, it seems as though this month we've, we've had some inclusiveness for transgender books with regards to Hell Followed With Us. And now just having the commentary for Somewhere Beyond the Sea. And I just think it's a, it's a, it's an important conversation. I think it's just, it is a valid beautiful conversation to have to ensure that our brothers and sisters that are the people in our community who identify how they choose to identify how they like would like us to identify them feel comfortable being able to like ask that of us and so like I would like to hear their voice and so that is one of the reasons this is Suicide Awareness Month, and I know that can be a very hard touching topic for a lot of people, and it is a very hard touching topic for just me and anyone, but, but not in a negating sort of way, but in a very personal sort of way, but I hear you. I see you. I would love to know your stories. And I'm so glad and thankful I get to read these stories to be able to understand better, to comprehend a little bit better, to maybe be a better ally. Um, if that is what these books are able to help me do. Um, but anyway that is my goal with regards to some of these books is I want people to know and I want people to like feel okay just being in who they are that is just kind of my hope um I just love books I love reading in in a diversity read like in a diversity realm I love reading in all things um I love hearing voices I love reading the rainbow of all all people all walks of life all i guess all all of the beautiful ways that people can tell me like the ways they've lived even if it's been hard even if it's been beautifully done um their words matter 
and so that's what this channel is for and somewhere beyond the sea made me tear up in so many different ways there were so many ways that i was tearing up because of the ways that tj clune is able to phrase certain things and i just like i just i don't know it's just so hard to describe but i loved the first book and so let me just tell you a little bit about this second book somewhere beyond the sea is a hugely anticipated sequel to house on the cerulean sea uh, Magical house, a secret past, a summons that could change everything. Arthur Parnassus lives a good life built on the ashes of a bad one. He is the master of a strange orphanage on a distant and peculiar, peculiar island, and he hopes to be the adoptive father to six dangerous and magical children who live there. Arthur works hard and loves with his whole heart so none of his children ever feel neglect and pain that he felt as an orphan on that very same island so long ago. He is not alone. Joining him is the love of his life, Linus, a former caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. And there's the island spirit, Zoe, and her girlfriend, Mayor Helen. Together, they will do anything to protect the children. And when Arthur is summoned to make a public statement about his dark past, he finds himself at the helm of a fight for the future that his family and all their all the magical people deserve. When a new magical child hopes to join them on their magical island, one who finds power in calling himself a monster, a name that Arthur worked so hard to protect his children from, Arthur knows they're at a breaking point. Their family will either grow stronger than ever or fall apart. Welcome back to Marseilles Island, and this is Arthur's story. So, the first story uh, on House on the Cerulean Sea was really more based on Linus and him coming to the island as a caseworker for the Department of Magical Youth um, and kind of kind of realizing that not only that um, the children were quirky and fun, but that he, like, that he fell in love with Arthur and all this sort of stuff. But this story is more about Arthur. And so we get a much better look into Arthur's past and we get really fun insight into the kids Chauncey is one of my favorites, and you've got um, Talia and all of the fun um, other characters that are just so cool, just so sweet, and just so fun to just dive into. So, love the children. They are absolutely, like, would it be an absolute sort of chaotic sort of whirlwind to walk into? Absolutely. But reading it from this vantage point of being like picking up this book and diving into this story, it is just so, so much fun to continue this journey with Arthur and Linus, to continue the story of love from a place of respect and to be able to identify people in the ways they want to be identified. So the new child, Daniel, wants to be a monster. He wants to be identified as a monster. Where when we first met Lucy, who is technically Lucifer, uh, he is considered the Antichrist in the first book, he... Um, they were working on convincing him that he didn't have to be. Uh, he didn't have to be a monster. He didn't have to be the thing that everybody was afraid of. He didn't have to be scary or all these sorts of things. Well, Daniel wants to be a monster. He wants to be scary. He, that's what he wants. He, he identifies with being a monster. 
And so, how does Linus and Arthur work to, with the other children to say, it's okay to be a monster even though you, we've told you, you don't have to be a monster. And so, it is kind of a little bit of, um, because they do have to work through some of the things that they have said, you know, you don't have to be a monster, but if you want to be a monster, you can be a monster. It's not as though they're going back on the things that they've said, but they are affirming the things. It's like, if you choose to go down this path, you can do it. However, please understand, you need to do it with your whole heart and you're doing it without harm towards others because that's what they're working towards is trying to ensure that the path that each go down each of the children go down is not towards harm and they are teaching them control and they're teaching them but they're teaching them in a, in a respectful manner so it is very um, important in the ways they're to teaching these children um anyway very cute very well done love 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 this book five stars i mean if i could give it more stars on goodreads or any of these other like platforms i absolutely would i like this book huh, i think it's right at 400 pages yeah yeah it's right at almost exactly 400 pages so there you go easy read beautiful read i am so thankful that i picked up the physical copy i keep it on it's literally it was sitting on my nightstand right by my bed that's where i picked it up from um because i will probably be recommending this to my mom i think she'll probably cry um because there are just some such just heart-wrenching like like beautifully written moments in this book but anyway thank you so much for tuning in Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for being here with me and dealing with my chaotic self. <laughs> and with all of that being said, I will see you guys on the next page. And who knows what I'll be wearing at that point. Maybe it'll be one of my other wigs. Maybe it'll be another crown. Who knows? Because I've got several other crowns, several other wigs. And this is actually clothes I've already had in my closet. I didn't even have to buy this stuff. Like, it was just stuff I had. I know. I just, I just have stuff. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much and I'll talk to you later.